Okay. So we're getting near the end of the semester. We have just a couple chapters left for this class to go through. Mostly volcanoes, and then we'll finish up the semester with the changing climate, and what that means for you. So we'll spend the next couple of weeks looking at volcanoes, my particular favorite hazard, which is weird. I grew up in Wisconsin, land of cheese, packers, and cows, far away from a volcano as you can be. Even in high school, Mount St. Helens was the last major eruption in the lower 48. That happened when I was a junior in high school, sadly. And being in Wisconsin, I really didn't give it much of a thought. You know, I had no idea that you could actually have a career looking at volcanoes. I was going to be a dentist. I went to college to be a dentist or a doctor. And through a long series of circumstances, I ended up in geology. I ended up getting an internship at Mount St. Helens my senior year while it was still erupting. And, you know, for a kid from Wisconsin who had never seen a mountain over 1,900 feet tall, it was pretty stunning and had a huge effect on me. And since that time, I've never really wanted to do anything else. So I haven't. I became a professor so I can teach this stuff to you. And a couple times a year, I get to go play on an erupting volcano. And it's pretty awesome. So... That's how I sort of got into this. So how many of you have seen a volcano, an erupting volcano? I don't run across too many people. Every once in a while I get somebody who's been to Hawaii and was able to walk out and see the lava. Um, Hawaii stopped erupting in 2018, so you can't even do that now. So now you have to travel pretty far to see a volcanic eruption. So most of you have never seen one, but you've seen them on TV or videos or Maybe you covered them in your eighth grade earth science class. What's a volcano? Want to give it a shot? Uh, I would say a mountain Okay, so let's kind of break that down. It's a mountain. It's some sort of feature that builds up, okay? And you said it's along plate boundaries. That's mostly true. 90 plus percent of all volcanoes are found along plate boundaries. We do get a few oddball volcanoes that are found in middles of plates. Hawaii is one that's right in the middle of the Pacific plate. Yellowstone, which is only a couple hundred miles from here, right in the middle of the North American plate. Nowhere near any plate boundary, but they're very rare. Usually it's where two plates are colliding or two plates are coming apart. And then what makes it a volcano rather than just a mountain? What separates a volcano out from other mountains? Yeah. Does that have something to do with like, the crust of the mantle? It does, but at its very basic, a volcano is something where things come out of it. I mean, that's like the lowest level definition I can get, right? Stuff comes out of volcanoes and it helps to build up that mountain. It could be lava or it could be ash. Sometimes it's just gas. Um, usually we think of it as lava, okay? And lava is melted rock. So that's where your part comes in. And that's where the lava comes from. It's from the crust or the upper part of the mantle. So it's melted rock that somehow gets to the Earth's surface. And if you think about the physics, and we won't get into the physics so much in here, but it's actually really hard to get melted rock to erupt at the Earth's surface. First thing, it's hard to melt rock. And when you melt it, you just barely melt it. And as it rises up through the cooler rock, it tends to cool off and harden. So actually getting it all the way to the Earth's surface is a really rare event. Vast majority of magma that's produced stays in the ground. And even during a volcanic eruption, you may only erupt 10% of what's down there. Again, most of it stays in the ground. So there's actually lots of different definitions for volcanoes. But here's probably the simplest one. I like simple definitions. It's an opening in the ground. Sometimes it's a circular or cylindrical vent. Sometimes it's a big crack in the ground. Sometimes there's no mountain there at all beforehand. 
just a crack opens up and lava starts coming out. And sometimes that lava will build up into a nice cone, and sometimes it won't. Sometimes it just sort of spreads out all over. But it's some sort of opening in the Earth's crust, ground. If you're on Earth, we do have volcanoes on other planets through which melted rock can pour out, emanate. That's a volcano. That's probably the, if I ask you to draw a volcano, 90% of you would draw something that looks like that. A nice symmetrical cone. Not all volcanoes have that shape. Notice <laughs> this in the foreground. Anybody know where this is? Yeah. It's Mount Fuji. Yeah, this is a view from the southern border of uh, Tokyo. 25 million people. So volcanoes, you said before, where do most volcanoes form? Plate boundaries, right? And we have lots of plate boundaries along coastlines. Where do most people live? Coastlines. So volcanoes and people like to reside in the same areas. So even though we don't have much of a volcanic danger here in Colorado, most of the world does. This is something a lot of the world lives with. And in fact, I was at a volcano in Indonesia a while back where one million people lived on the cone. And it's been erupting for 50 years straight. It erupts all the time. And it kills people all the time. But they just live with it. The ash, the debris that comes out of the volcano makes really fertile soil. Great for growing things. Especially coffee. And you know, lots of... Lots of Java comes from Java. And Java is an Indonesian island where this volcano, which is called Merapi, resides. So volcanoes and people, they hang out with one another. There's another one. Another nice cylindrical volcano. This is in Russia, Kamchatka. This is the most, probably the most impressive mountain that I've seen in my life. It's over 15,000 feet tall and it comes right out of the ocean, right off the coast. 15,000 feet of relief. You just don't see that anywhere. When we look at Long's Peak, Long's Peak is 14,000 feet, but we're here at five or 6,000. So it's only about 9,000 feet of relief. Mount Everest, Mount Everest is the tallest point on earth, 29,000 feet, but the surrounding area, it's about 20,000 feet. So this has twice the relief of any place I've ever seen. It's just unbelievable how big this is. And it erupts all the time. It's always erupting. Klui Cheskoi. Pretty cool volcano in Russia. Okay, so what we'll do today, and probably part of the next class, is we'll go through the background. Some of this background is going to be a little more complicated than some of the things we've talked about so far, but it's certainly something you can all follow and understand. And then we'll get into the hazards part. How, does, how do these features and these processes affect humans? So if we go back to our definition, we said it's some opening in the earth through which magma emanates. And we usually talk about magma as being molten rock, but it's more complicated than that. And it's these complications really what you need to understand in order to understand how volcanoes work. So magma actually has four components, four parts to it. It's got the melted material, and we're going to talk about a certain kind of melted rock called silicate rocks. We'll get into that right away. Silicates are the most common rock type on the planet. Most rocks are made of silicate material. And in order to understand magma, you really have to understand how silicates are put together. So if you look at magma, it's got melted rock. And to melt it, you have to have temperatures that exceed the melting point. Melting points of rocks are really high. Most rocks melt up around 1,000 degrees centigrade, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So you gotta get them really, really hot to melt them. But some 
minerals have even higher melting points than that. If you go to Hawaii, there's a really common mineral there called olivine. If you've ever seen the gemstone peridot, it's a beautiful green mineral, that's olivine. That's a really common mineral in the lavas in Hawaii, but it melts at 1500 degrees or so. And the lava temperatures there are about 1100 degrees. So it's not hot enough to melt olivine. So olivine is actually a solid mineral in this river of red runny stuff. So you have some minerals that have melted and turned into runny fluids. And then you have some minerals that just have too high of a melting point and they stay solid. And if you could get up close enough to the lava, not burn your eyeball, you would actually see these little green minerals floating by you. I've never seen that because I can't get close enough because it burns your hair and it burns your skin, and burns your boots and burns everything else. The really important part in what drives a volcanic eruption is this third one, which is gas. So anytime you exceed the boiling point of a substance, it's going to turn to gas. So we have gases in volcanoes. You want to take a guess as to what the most common gas is by far in a volcano? How many of you have been to Yellowstone? So we have this volcano up in Wyoming. It hasn't erupted in some time, but there's still a lot of activity there, and there's lots of gas that comes out of the ground. And it's called Yellowstone because it has lots of sulfur. And if you've been to volcanoes, they stink. They smell like rotten eggs. That's the sulfur gases. As it turns out, that's only about 3 or 4% of all the gas that's coming out of the volcano. Most of it is water. 90% of the gas that comes off of a volcano is just steam. That's actually, our oceans were born from ancient volcanoes, spitting up all this gas, most of which was water, that would condense in the atmosphere and fall back to Earth. So we have lots of water born by volcanoes. And then the final thing is xenolith. You guys heard that term before? What's a, you guys know what lith is? If you take a geology class, geology class, you learn it quick. It means rock. Lith is rock. What about xeno? I'm sure you guys have heard the term xeno. You may have heard of what a xenophobe or... You guys know what xeno is? If you're a xenophobe, what are you? It's a term that we had a lot. Afraid of what? Afraid of foreign things, right? We t talk about people being xenophobic if they don't like people from other countries. So it's a foreign thing. So this is a foreign rock. What it is, I like to think of them as hitchhikers. So you get magma that's produced down in the mantle and as it rises up to the surface, little pieces of rock will fall into that rising magma and then get transported all the way to the Earth's surface. And you might think, yeah, big deal. Remember back earlier in the semester, we talked about the different parts of the Earth, crust, mantle, core. Have we ever been to the mantle? I have a piece of mantle in my office. A nice piece of it. Great big chunk of the mantle. We haven't been there, right? How did I get it? A volcano brought it up. So they can be pretty useful. These are just pieces of rock. They really don't affect the eruption, but they give us good information about what's going on down beneath the volcano itself. So I think I will stop there, and then next class we'll get into the details of this. Don't forget to take your quiz. And, yeah, question. Uh, the quiz on my end said it was due on 11 6. Just, that means the next Monday, right? Well, 11 6 <laughs> is not, yeah, we're already past that. I'll go check on it. Yeah, next yeah. Monday at noon. So you, were you even able to take it? No, uh, no I am. It just, I haven't taken it yet. It just said 11 6 2, and I was like, oh, man. I think I need this Canvas, man. I hate it. All right, I'll go, I'll go try to fix that. Thanks for telling me. All right.